guys. Scott Cunningham, founder of Arclight Dynamics here with the third video in our series. In this video we're going to be discussing a little bit more about the G-code, moving through the G-code, and also pausing your system and starting it back up again. So I have my control system pulled up. I have my uh, motor power turned on and my e-stop is off. So what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to go open up another G-code. You look in your desktop, you will see test files. Or let's go to NGC files. Here you're going to see AL quarter bottle opener, basically. So double click on that, pulls it up, a little arc light bottle opener. So if you don't actually have this file um, on your machine, um, that's fine. You can use one of the other files that are in your system under the NGC files. Um, you'll have the control cabinet pivot tab, but I would recommend using the other file that's available, just not the engraver test file. Um, this, uh, the reason not to use the pivot tab is it only has one pierce and a perimeter cut, so it'll make it a little bit harder to follow along with what we're doing. I picked this one because it has a couple different cuts. So it allows me to show you the, the process of rewinding and fast forwarding properly. Um, so if you look here on the code, you can tell a few things about it by reading through this. Essentially, first off, um, we can tell that it was done with the plasma. So we know this is built for cutting with a plasma system. Um, the tool that was used to create this is a 45 amp quarter inch steel tool so it's built to be cut out of quarter inch steel and you know we're going to have a preset amps of 45 amps and a preset volts of 137 volts so now we're not going to be cutting this out so I'm not as concerned about this uh, at the moment right now my torch has fine cut tips on it so I couldn't actually cut this out and uh, that material on the table is 14 gauge so it, it wouldn't cut out right but for our purposes we're going to be just doing a bunch of dry runs here to demonstrate some of the components and to demonstrate essentially how to pause and uh, maneuver through the code so what I want to talk about here is we have our display of the tool path. And what you can actually do is you can click on it, the, any of these lines or moves, and it will jump to that line in the code, basically. So you can see that this is our first start cut over here. Um, we have the cut for the circle. You can see this represented by here. You have this. This is a J I J move. That uh, is a an arc or a circle. Um, you can see this transfer move right here, moving between the cuts. Basically, an X and a Y move. Um, so this is a good way for you to be able to navigate around, particularly if you have to. You know you have to either recut something or you want to pick back up on a certain project at a certain pierce. Um, you can zoom in and, and get to that and then start from the right location. We'll discuss how to start from particular locations in the middle of a file a little bit later. So, but for right now, I just want to show you. Um, show you this feature, how to maneuver through the code. I, I recommend you, you play with this and start to understand what this code means because it'll give you a lot of insight into the, what the machine is doing. Um, but the next step I want to talk about is I'm going to go rewind to the beginning and I want to talk about a single step feature right here. This single step feature will allow us to go through the code bit by bit. And basically what it's going to do, so I'm going to hit run and click OK. 
And then we're going to go over here. I'm going to hit single step. Okay. And then I'm going to have to. So it's basically read through the first part of the code. I'm going to have to hit it again. It made a small move to the first pierce point. It dropped down to what is our safety Z. This at this point, this is when the Z axis is going to start sensing with the switch for the material. It went through its sensing where it drove down until it triggered the switch. Now if there wasn't anything underneath my torch, it would keep going down. So very important you're doing this over either a piece of material or something that will the torch can touch off on. So the torch is touching off on the material right now. Next step. Now the torch raised up just enough, okay, so that it's not touching the material basically. Okay, so what it, it's, it, we're, we're up to, to cut height essentially. You can watch the z-axis. 0 0.06 is generally your cut height. It now moved up to pierce height and you can see the torch turned on. Now I still, oh, I forgot to mention, I still have disabled torch on. I don't want to be cutting right now. So it's trying to turn on the torch. Drops the cut height after it has pierced. It does the lead in. And then it does the hole. Next it's going to move up. Very small move to finish out the the hole, and then it moves up to transfer height. These these are these are settable, but I recommend you just leave it as the default heights, and then it moves over to the next pierce. So this lets you single step mode is really nice. Lets you really get to understand the different components of how the machine is moving through its cut. I really recommend you understand this touch-off sequence. So basically, we sense for the material, drop down to sensing height, sense for the material, touch it, pull back up, pull up to pierce height, touches the torch, fires the torch, drops to cut height, and then begins the cut. That sequence of events is very important and it all has to happen properly in order for the torch to fire correctly. Okay, so now let's rewind this code and we're going to talk about pausing the table. I'm going to stop it. I still have disabled torch on so we can do dry runs. I rewinded the code. I'm going to hit run. And so when we are cutting, the only time that you can pause the table is in between cuts. And the reason for this is when you, if you pause the table, it will not turn off the torch when it's cutting. And so the, court, the torch will continue to fire while the machine is sitting there. And two things will happen. You'll burn a big hole in your part and the torch height control will command the, mo the torch to go down into the material because as you burn a big hole, the voltage changes and the torch height control will try to adjust for that. So you never pause during a cut. That's a number one rule. So I'm going to hit run, click OK, click resume. I'm going to sit here on the pause, let it cut the hole. As it moves up and over, I can pause the table. And then I can hit resume, and the machine continues on. As it moves back up and transfers over, I can pause the table. And then I can hit resume. Okay? I cannot pause during a cut like this. Because as you can see, the torch is left on, 
and we would be burning a big hole and we would lose our and it would kind of ruin things. Okay. So you cannot pause during a cut. You can only pause on a cut or in between your cuts. So I recommend you play with that, become very comfortable with it. Um, you never want to have to hit stop. You always want to pause. Stopping the machine is more abrupt than pausing. When you pause the machine, it allows you to finish the last lines of code it has read and complete those moves. Stopping the machine is more like an e-stop. It just kills the machine right where it is. And you can run into issues where the machine can lose its position because it's stopped so abruptly. Pausing the machine will always allow you to pick back up. So now I'm going to rewind the code and I want to talk about your torch on and torch off codes. Okay. So again, I'm going to hit run, click OK, I'm going to hit resume, and then I'm going to pause the machine and I'm going to talk about these two codes here. M03 and M05. M03 is torch on. M05 is torch off. This is very important that you understand, you remember what these codes mean. Because this is how you can rewind the code or fast forward through the code, basically. So I can determine, say I wanted to, for some reason, skip this hole. I don't want to cut this hole. I just want to cut the, let the rest of the part cut out. Okay. This M03 represents, if I click on this hole, you can see there's the hole move. That's where the torch turned on for the hole. And this is where the torch is going to turn off for the hole. Okay. So if I want to skip this hole, I can click on this M05 right there. I'm going to hit stop. And what I'm going to do is hit run from line. This will tell it the machine to run just from this line, basically. And so it's going to skip this hole completely and instead move over and do the other cut. I paused it in between the cuts. So if, okay, I want to rewind it back to and cut this hole. Well, okay, let's, if I click on this hole, it'll bring the code back to where it is. Okay, conveniently I can see there's the M03. There's the start and there's the torch off. Okay, so we always want to, I don't want to just go back to M03 and start from M03. I have to start from the, either the previous M1 or the previous M3. Okay, so usually, or, or M5, I'm sorry. So usually what you're doing is you're rewinding and starting from the end of the previous cut. Now, since this is the first one, I don't have a previous cut. This M1 is my previous cut. Oops. So if I go back to M01, run from line, that's the resume. Machine goes back and cuts my hole. Okay. I'm going to let it cut the middle of the A. Paused it in between the cuts. Let's say I want to rewind it back to the A. Well, I can simply click on the A. There's the start of the cut. I've rewind to the previous M05. I hit stop here. And then I hit run from on. 
Machine goes back, recuts the A. As you can see, this is how you can navigate your way through the G code. So two things to keep in mind. Never pause during a cut like this, like I just did. You always pause in between your cuts. And if you want to rewind a code or fast forward a code, let's rewind back to this. Uh, we'll rewind back to the beginning of this cut right here. I'm going to click right there. There's the start of the cut. Rewind to the previous M05. Click on it. And then hit run from that line. Back over. And it recuts the perimeter. So you can't just pause a cut like I've talked about many times and then pick back up because the you're not the machine is just reading this code. And if it doesn't read the the torch on code, it won't try to fire the torch. You know, so if I say went back to this line, it said stop, and then said run from this line. You can see the machine just moved over and ran through the motion, but the torch wouldn't have turned on because the code would not have it would not have read the M03 code to turn the torch on. So understanding how you rewind and fast forward the code is really important and it will save you a lot of time. So I recommend you practice with this and become very familiar with it. Thanks for watching and I hope that video was helpful. Please remember our primary goal is to make your purchase profitable. So don't hesitate to reach out for help. You can reach us at 866-222-2154 or head over to our website where you'll find a complete list of all of our training materials. Thank you.